Hello everyone. This is Recap Revelations. Today we're entering the fascinating world of the action film from 1993, The Fugitive. Hold on tight. Keep an eye out for the exciting adventure and enjoy the ride. On a fairly routine evening, as usual, you come back from the exhausting work to the wife. Waiting at home expecting only that you are coming home, you find a dangerous foreign murderer in your home who brutally murdered your beloved woman, and any accusation of murder that you did not commit and did not describe in your worst dreams finally falls on you? On Dr. Richard Kimball she fell on a clear day without any warning, after which the court ruled that he would be executed by a quick lethal injection, while he was stunned by the terrible blow upon which it had just landed. Richard was taken to Maynard Prison to await his intended execution, along with a number of other prisoners in an armored shuttle bus and hard security. Forty minutes before arriving at the destination, one of the inmates knocks and begins to take a lot of foam out of the mouth. As soon as the officer approaches him to check, he stabs him and is shot immediately afterwards. During a struggle with one of the prisoners in an escape attempt, the bus driver is shot and the vehicle quickly loses control of the roadside. The bus rolls several times in the air down the mountain and stops, but the remaining survivors soon discover that they are on the train tracks, and a train locomotive approaches them at lightning speed and they must save their lives. Richard finds himself looking in horror at the speeding train and jumps at the last minute from the bus, and immediately after that the train hits the bus with tremendous force pulling the bus much further on the tracks. The locomotive follows the huge accident, derails, and Richard finds himself chased by the locomotive, which continues to drive long after being cut off from the track on after it and threatens to end his life with tremendous speed. Richard manages to jump and dodge at the right moment while the train explodes in a huge explosion above him. Lost among the wreckage of the burning train, he tries to crawl up and receives unexpected help from another prisoner named Copeland who demands that he not follow him under any circumstances. Richard realizes that he has had a golden opportunity to escape and begins to run quickly from the accident site as he is wounded and bruised, he continues to advance down the river. Deputy Marshal Samuel Gerard takes the case into his own hands when he proves that the prisoners have fled and were not killed in the train accident according to the local police version, while he wields the leg shackles of one of the prisoners who fled in a victory movement. Samuel declares Richard a fugitive and sets the parameters for the search for Richard Kimball while Richard keeps walking away from the scene running along the river. Richard continues to sneak silently up the river on the escape route taking a truck driver's uniform, changing the incriminating outfit and arriving at the nearest hospital under the guise of a worker bandaging himself and quickly disinfecting his wounds. In the hospital, he shaves quickly, satisfies the hunger, and wears a doctor's robe, which masks him well and prevents even a very alert policeman from discovering him after the dramatic change. Richard steals an ambulance and awakens the attention of Samuel, who runs a live chase after him by helicopter and other police vehicles in order to get him. Upon reaching the bridge inside a large water dam, he finds himself surrounded in both directions by Samuel's men, but finds a hidden refuge in the sewer pipes. Samuel lashes out after Richard in the sewer pipes and chases him through the rapidly complex sewer canals along with his task force. At a certain moment of the chase, Samuel slips through the sewers without his weapon and Richard threatens him from afar with a gun, declaring that he has not murdered his wife, and Samuel claims that he does not care while his hands are raised. Richard walks away but arrives very quickly at the final pipe where the waterfall spills out of the high dam, and Samuel threatens him from the other side to surrender to him and put the gun down at that moment. Richard, who does not give in to Samuel, jumps a terrible suicide jump from the high waterfall and falls into the raging river dam waters while Samuel looks on in wonder below and is then stunned. Richard miraculously survives the jump and swims frozen from a source to the riverbank and hides it well under the guise of the wooden leaves so that it will not be detected in Samuel's scanning waves upriver. Freezing in the makeshift leaf blanket, he recalls the moments of sweet love he experienced with Helen, and immediately afterwards her soul moments and the struggle with Helen's killer, a brutal prosthetic armed killer in his home, and his last hug to her, and awakens in horror. Richard dyes his hair black to blur his face further, and gets a ride from a nice woman to town. 
Samuel quickly manages to locate Copeland in a hiding apartment and after a raid on his home he threatens one of his men and Samuel neutralizes him with a surprise shot, kills Copeland, and saves the crewman's life. Richard's lawyer refuses to help Richard and he turns to his co-worker Charles Nichols for help with little cash. He accepts and disappears into the street alley in masterful silence. Samuel tries to truly understand why Richard murdered his wife, but fails to get the real logical motive from the police investigators involved in the investigation. Richard rents a temporarily neglected basement in order to operate out of it easily. Richard arrives at Cook County Hospital, sneaks into the prosthetics department, and enters the lab, and into the service room where he soon steals a janitor's badge without feeling it. Charles admits to Samuel that he has given Richard money but is unwilling to cooperate to help and hurt Richard while he claims that he is innocent and acts in sophisticated ways and they will not find him. More loving memories of Helen and the fight with the man with his prosthetic arm from the, the night of the kill put him back in action and he goes back to the hospital. This time with an impromptu employee tag posing as a janitor with whom he manages to penetrate the database and discover five matching candidates for a suspect with whom he struggled in his home on the day of Helen's murder. Richard is nearly captured by hospital security while saving the life of a sick child with a crucial medical opinion but quickly evades and escapes finally. Richard narrows the list of suspects in phone calls to their relatives and deletes the list of suspects, the irrelevant suspects while Samuel exceeds the exact same list. Richard is left with two suspects and arrives to visit an irrelevant suspect's detention center and is forced to say goodbye to him before the visit began. Upon leaving the scene, Samuel nearly captures Richard when he recognizes him and chases him, missing him at the last minute at the armored security door while shooting him and completely loses him in the parade in which he fits lightly in a green hat. Richard arrives at the home of the last suspect named Frederick Sykes and discovers a picture of himself and a doctor named Lenz who he was introduced by his friend Charles Nichols on the Benefits Eve. Richard goes through Frederick's medical files and finds forms from the giant company Devlin McGregor Pharmaceuticals that funded the Benefit Night including another cruise to the Caribbean on their funding and realizes that he has surpassed Helen's killer after reconnecting the events. Richard leaves a trail to Samuel with the intention of locating the phone call and arriving at the scene so that he will also understand the facts and investigate Frederick's involvement in the murder. Richard discovers that Lenz is dead from his friend Charles, but after a simple comparison of a patient's blood sample with Devlin McGregor's drug, realizes that the samples have been replaced and Lenz on the day of his death signed half of the samples, although Richard discovered that the drug was causing enormous damage to the liver. Richard realizes that he was in the crosshairs and not Helen, and someone with power and access has managed to take care of the sample replacement and deliver the medicine despite the enormous damage it causes. Frederick Sykes is ordered to assassinate Richard from the company, but Richard in a stubborn and dangerous subway fight subdues him and handcuffs him to the metal pole of the car. Richard arrives at the hotel where Charles gives a presentation about the discovery of the new drug Richard discovered to be dangerous to use, interrupts him in a speech, and accuses him of faking medical research and committing Helen's murder for the money he received from Devlin McGregor for approval of the drug. Charles and Richard confront many on the roof of the hotel and fall into the laundry room where Samuel has been following more closely what is happening than Richard who knows about the Charles and Frederick conspiracy and is aware that he is innocent and must stop running away. Charles tries to shoot Samuel, but Richard <laughs> and save Samuel's life at the last minute from certain death, while Samuel quietly confirms to him that he knows everything and it is over now. In the final scene of the film, Samuel escorts Richard to ride in handcuffs in front of the astonished press, removes the handcuffs from him and gives him an ice pack to put on the spot. At that moment, Richard discovers that contrary to what he said, Samuel did care. The Fugitive is a riveting thriller that grips audiences from beginning to end. With its intense pacing, gripping plot twists, and impressive action sequences, this film keeps viewers on the edge of their seats. A timeless classic that combines suspense, drama, and outstanding performances, The Fugitive is a must-watch for any fan of thrilling cinema. His strength lies in its impeccable pacing and suspenseful storytelling. From the pulse-pounding opening sequence to the nail-biting climax, every moment is filled with tension and intrigue. 
Harrison Ford delivers a powerhouse performance as the determined and resourceful Kimball, making viewers empathize with his plight and root for his eventual vindication. Tommy Lee Jones shines as the tenacious and sharp-witted Gerard, infusing the character with both toughness and humanity. His dynamic portrayal adds depth to the cat-and-mouse game between Kimball and his pursuers, elevating the film beyond a simple action thriller. If you enjoyed this recap from Recap Revelations, be sure to subscribe for a continuous stream of similar videos. Your support means the world to us, so don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks a million for tuning in.